John Tenniel was born in 1820 in Bayswater, West London, and was one of six children. His father was a fencing and dancing master of French Huguenot descent, and at the age of 20, Tenniel suffered a serious eye wound, courtesy of his father, during a bout of fencing practice. In the years that followed, he gradually lost sight in his right eye, but luckily it didn't prevent him from becoming one of Britain's most successful Victorian illustrators. In 1842 he began to study at the Royal Academy, but was less than delighted with their formal academic approach to teaching. So he continued to draw for his own amusement and creative development, and in that year he appeared in print for the first time with a couple of unpromising contributions to Samuel Carter Hall's book of British ballads. And in 1846 he created equally unexceptional narrative illustrations for the novella Undine, written by Friedrich de la Motte Fouquet. At this time, Tenya was having some limited success as a painter in oils, and illustration commissions were few and far between. But in 1848, that changed dramatically when his illustrated edition of Aesop's Fables was published. In this book, he established himself as a considerably more characterful illustrator than his earlier forays had indicated, and one who could apply anthropomorphic skills with considerable success. The series of images he created, engraved by Josiah Wood Wimper, drew considerable favourable attention to his increasingly sophisticated and expressive draftsmanship. And it was the liveliness of his drawings for this book which brought him to the attention of one of the editors at Punch magazine, who offered him a job as a staff artist in 1850, and Tenniel gladly accepted. Working for Punch quickly proved to be a perfect fit for Tenniel, and he took every opportunity to refine his graphic skills in the satirical images he created for them. But despite the volume of work he was creating for the magazine, he also continued to be involved with other projects. In 1854, the book Proverbial Philosophy, a collection of high-minded verses by M.E. Tupper was published, which featured around a dozen different illustrators and engravers. The pages created by Tenniel were uncharacteristically lightly rendered and engraved, with scant evidence of his usual evocative cross hat shading. He also created illustrations for Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven in 1858 as one of several illustrators commissioned for a collection of the author's work. And in 1860 he produced a set of comical Happy Families playing cards, an extremely rare excursion into chromolithographically printed colour. Tenniel was as productive as he was talented and by 1860 he was also working regularly for the magazine once a week, mainly producing illustrations to accompany the short form fiction which featured in every issue. As such there was no place here for his more comedic tendencies and among other assignments he created a large volume of illustrations for two melodramatic tales written by Shirley Brooks, the first of which was The Gordian Knot in 1860 which was closely followed by the silver cord a year later. All these images were engraved by Joseph Swain, who also transcribed his drawings for Punch. And he was one of the most respected and in demand engravers throughout the second half of the century. By this time, Tenniel's contributions to Punch had become almost exclusively political in nature. What he illustrated and what the point of the image would be was not always of his choosing, as the content of Punch, both written and drawn, was largely decided by the editorial team. Whether Tenniel wrote his own captions doesn't seem to be recorded, but whatever the case, it was undoubted of the power and graphic eloquence of what he drew and how he drew it, which was the driving force behind any given satirical work. By the middle of the decade, his success was bringing in a considerable amount of income. Alongside his punch salary of about £800 a year, now worth more than 120000 he was selling original drawings for what would now be around £1,500 each to collectors. He was making yet more income from book commissions, and Tenniel continued to work with his contemporaries on group projects such as 1862's Inglesby Legends. In this instance, he was one of three illustrators, alongside George Cruikshank and John Leach, and Tenniel produced some particularly energetic and gleefully sinister images, easily the equal of those created by his more experienced contributors. 
The same was true of the part he played in the DL's illustrated Arabian Nights Entertainment, published a year later, featuring separate tales assigned to more than a dozen illustrators. And it's a reflection of the dominance of their engraving firm that the DL brothers gave themselves top billing for the book, while the illustrators involved were relegated to the generic term eminent artists. But it was in 1865 that Tenniel created what would become his best known and most admired work for Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Carroll, whose real name was the Reverend Charles Dodson, had completed Alice in 1864, then titled Alice's Adventures Underground, with his own somewhat amateurish and unconvincing illustrations. But he was persuaded by the engraver Orlando Jewett to employ the services of a professional illustrator, and in turn Carroll approached Tenniel, whose work he was familiar with from Punch. Tenniel was eventually convinced, despite Carroll's manifestly controlling ways, to collaborate, and the first edition of the retitled Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, replete with his remarkable illustrations, engraved by the DL brothers, was printed and published in 1865. It had been an uneasy alliance between the author and illustrator with many heated disagreements about what should be in any particular image and how characters should look, and neither was inclined to compromise. Nevertheless, and obviously in no small part due to Tenniel's astonishing fantasy images, the book became an instant bestseller. It wasn't a picture book as we understand the term nowadays, but more an illustrated novel, with a fairly large amount of written narrative. Nevertheless, virtually every page also contained illustrated material from Tenniel, from small spot images dotted creatively within the text, through to full-page complex scenes. And every one would become iconic enduring visualisations of the cast of characters and the world they inhabited. It has never been out of print since the first edition was published, and has since been translated into over 150 languages. The success of the book brought even greater celebrity and acclaim to Tenniel and his work, and by this point he was virtually a household name in Britain and across Europe. Following this undoubted high point in his career as a book illustrator, he nevertheless continued to work regularly for Punch in his capacity as social and political commentator. He also illustrated William Haig Miller's book The Mirage of Life, published by the Religious Tract Society in 1867. Naturally enough, these images were far from humorous in nature, and their formal composition and posing couldn't begin to compete with his more imaginative and entertaining work. But this book aside, it was his work for Punch which defined the later 1860s, and he continued to create a large amount of well-drawn, witty images reflecting on the national and global politics of the period. Trading on his celebrity status and reputation, in 1871 a collection of Tenniel's Punch cartoons from the 1850s and 60s was published in book form, and such was the level of his popularity it sold in large numbers. And also in that same year his illustration for Carroll's second book, Alice Through the Looking Glass and What Alice Found There, were published. And the book proved to be every bit as popular as the first, selling in unprecedented numbers in every territory it was printed. The narrative was just as surreal and atmospheric as the first, and Tenniel created another flawless collection of absurd and sometimes unsettling illustrations which featured throughout the book, again in smaller and larger formats. Because of the tension between the two men in the making of the first Alice book, Tenniel had vowed not to collaborate with Carol again, but he had allowed himself to be persuaded. Even so, after the completion of Through the Looking Glass, Tenniel abandoned not just work with Carol, but all literary illustration. So Tenniel was now totally committed to his work for Punch, producing many more illustrations in the following decades. Among these cartoons, he produced many which satirised the then Prime Minister, Benjamin Disraeli. But like all Tenniel's political work, these cartoons were never needlessly aggressive, and could even be seen as affectionate. Many of the cartoons he created in this period were celebrated in 1882 with the publication of another decade's worth of political and social satire from Punch, 
and as the previous book had done with the 1860s, this one constituted a satirical but historically accurate and revealing record of British and world events of the 1870s. Throughout the 1880s and 90s, he continued to be immensely prolific and produced a stream of cartoons, still engraved by the ever-reliable Mr Swain for the pages of Punch. And as with many topical satirical illustrations from what for us is the distant past, we may not fully understand the underlying situation, but the visual symbolic shorthand used by Tenniel and the sheer lifelike solidity and expressive posing of his images can still be thoroughly enjoyed even by contemporary viewers. Such was the respect he had received through his work, Tenniel was knighted for public service in 1893 by Queen Victoria. It was the first such honour ever bestowed on an illustrator. When he retired in 1901, Tenniel was honoured with a farewell banquet, attended by many leading figures of the time, both political and artistic. And to commemorate his remarkable career, the book Cartoons Selected from Punch was published, and sales were, as you might expect, many. And Sir John Tenniel eventually died in London of natural causes in 1914, just three days shy of his 94th birthday. If only because of his invaluable and seminal illustrations for the two Alice books and their enduring iconic status, which shows no sign of fading away just yet, Sir John Tenniel remains a significant and greatly admired illustrator and master of black and white. And if he had never created any other work in his lifetime, the two Alice books would remain as a testament to his creativity, skill and imagination. But although his work for Punch tends to be somewhat overshadowed by Alice, his significant contribution to the development of satire and political commentary in the more than 2,000 cartoons he created during his lifetime and the socio-political insight into the later Victorian era it provides is to my mind at least worthy of equal praise and admiration. <laughs>